I'm Dr. Bart Rademacher, and this is Prescription for Your Transformation, Real People, Real Conversations, and Real Success, really bringing to you the genius of other people, the experiences of other people, like Akshay and Anavati, so that you can then begin to put into perspective some of your own personal struggles and challenges and really learn from somebody who's done it, who's experienced it. It's very different than when you just read a book and somebody's just, you know, pontificating about what he thinks is right. The guy that we're talking to right now, an incredible human being. In fact, he's a superhuman human being because of all the things that he does. And he's on this incredible mission as well to change the world in, in a way that is so humbling that um, you just want to hear, you know, what his ultimate mission is. And, and I'm going to ask him to share that with that, you know, with us once again. But today is about duality and, and the struggles that we have with duality when in fact, you know, there's beauty in this duality and, and we, we want to embrace this. I mean, it's the yin and the yang, it's the, the light and the dark, you know, in, in today's world, certainly where there are so many forces wanting to unify everyone to think in a certain way, to believe a certain thing is just, you know, downright wrong. Not, not for any moral, not specific for moral or ethical reasons, but it's, it's, counterintuitive to our own personal well-being and growth. And so today we're going to talk about duality. So actually, thank you so much for, for joining me again today. Thank you for having me, my friend. And for any of those people that haven't heard, you know, any of the other uh, previous podcasts, you know, definitely want to go and, and listen to that. So duality, many people struggle with this polarity sometimes polarity is good especially in relationships but we're not talking about that right now you know where is the struggle that that you have seen other people have when it comes to the struggle of duality they can't see you know one side of the coin and then the other and agree with that you know we see it today in today's world i know so many people we can't talk about politics mm -hmm. and and i kind of chuckle because you know, whatever politics, you know, you have, you know, I'm right, you're wrong, but I'm totally okay with that, right? No, I'm just kidding. But the point <laughs> of the matter is, is that, you know, I'm fully accepting of, of people's views are different, because for me, that's that opportunity to actually grow and learn and, and become even more. But I, I want to hear from you. Number one, is why people have such a challenge with this duality, why they're stuck in just seeing the world in one way and and the truth behind the, and the benefit behind you know embracing this duality and expanding with it mm -hmm. you know we get trapped in our own constructs right like people fight die and kill for their belief systems so we hold on to it because it simplifies a complex world it makes reality feel a little easier than questioning our beliefs in many ways questions our very identity unless you disidentify from the self which we talked about earlier right so but we hold on to our beliefs as a part of ourself and so by letting that by questioning that by opening the door to the being potentially wrong about that is jarring to our identity so we hold on to one edge of of our little world right but to your point if i mean like with the marines we used to say if if you're a hammer every you know when you're a hammer everything looks like a nail you know, so if you only operate within one construct, that's all you will ever know and your life will be that way. And that's the problem. So we, so, so many of us want more out of life, but we stay within our co same construct. Unless we go beyond what we currently know, we're only going to get more of what we've always got, right? So the, I, the, so the, the challenge in dualities is that, is that it means challenging the very constructs and paradigms that have brought us to where we are now that have like shaped our lens of reality. It means going, I mean, what is duality? It's two seemingly contradictory forces that are in fact complementary. So when I say seemingly contradictory, we're talking about going to the other edge of the extreme, the other edge of the op, the very opposite of what we think we know is right. That's incredibly hard to do because it's literally questioning our entire sense of self identity to do that. Right. But that's where the value lies because Human beings, we think in relation to others at a very simplistic level, right? Like, how do I have a frame of reference if this blender that I'm looking at there, if that blender is good or bad? It makes it good or bad because I have a comparison to other blenders. How do I have a comparison to, is this vacation that I'm going on good or bad? I have a comparison, right? So we think in references. We think in this relativity. But so when we have the references of the edges of each duality, then we know what it's like the other edge. Like, life is... 
you can only have summits. And I mean, like literally as well as just in life and the emotional experience of life, if there is a valley without a valley, there is no summit and everything is a flat line. And you like life is an adventure. You don't want it to be a flat line. You want to experience the rail roller coaster. Otherwise you're just numb to the human experience. And I've been there. I've numbed my feelings coming back from the war. It's not a, it's not a healthy nor a fulfilling way to love it, to live. I've also seen people very, very close to me become completely apathetic to the human experience and to everything as a part of it. And they become like zombies. That's the inherent nature. If we lose the, if we lose the summits and valleys and life becomes a flat line, we will become like zombies. Nobody wants that. But in order to embrace summits and valleys, we got to go to the other edge of the duality. And that's another struggle is because inevitably one edge of the duality is more challenging than the other. So if you look at like dualities like uh, pain and pleasure, what do we all see, think we want? Pleasure, right? Discontentment and contentment. Discontentment is bad. We should just be content. Take the duality of ego and humility, light and dark, and day and night, uh, life and death, you know, fear and nirvana, suffering and play, any duality there's often the one side of it that is demonized. You know, we don't want to go into confront our demons. We'd rather stay in the edge of our divinity. And I'm using my own semantics of these dualities. Call it what you want, right? Pain and pleasure. I don't want to go into pain. Discontentment and contentment. I don't want to be discontent. But all these things have value, you know, even ego and humility. Ego is demonized all the time. All the time. There's a, you know, people say ego is the enemy. It is absolutely not the enemy. Absolutely not. If you want to, you have to tap into your ego to accomplish something great because you've got to believe in the greatness of yourself. But at the same time, humility can coexist. They're not opposites. Discontentment and contentment can coexist. I love where my life is now. I'm extremely content with it, but I'm also extremely discontent in that I know that I want a lot more. These forces can and they must coexist. It's the, it's the rejection of the unification of the dualities that leads to greater misery because we think we only play in one realm and then we inevitably like either completely reject the other realm or the other realm sort of enters its way into us anyway, like in the context of, let's say, pain and pleasure, and we fight it. We think it's the enemy, right? Pain and pleasure. We think pain is bad. Instead, if we just accept it, embrace it and seek it and love it, we can now embrace the polarities of the human experience and ultimately find bliss by playing on those edges. Like the fundamental flaw when it comes to mental health is the belief that it is a state without tension. We think it's complete calm. It's, you know, it's, it's homeostasis. It's equilibrium. The truth is that equilibrium is attained through deliberate disequilibrium. By playing on the edges, I find peace. Inner peace, as I always like to say, the fundamental philosophy is that inner peace is the, like with the path to inner peace is the pursuit of a worthy inner war. When we pursue that worthy inner war, that worthy fight, worthy struggle, we find inner peace, you know, and I've said it in multiple different ways, like happiness is not the elimination of sadness, it's the ability to find the gift of sadness. All of these things are ultimately pointing to the same idea, that embracing the duality, as I, the concept, I, the, the term I give to it, and it's nothing sort of, you know, I've not created it, but the terminology I use is singular dualism, right? That the idea that there are all these dualism, dualities, that they are in fact one, they do in fact, and they they do in fact coexist and it's by embracing both edges that we find true peace we find inner peace happiness fulfillment uh equilibrium you know and but we have to embrace that only through disharmony can we find harmony and that's a seemingly that's a seeming pat like the, the sort of paradox of life but that's that's the fundamental truth that i've that i've found and that's why i continue to play on the edge of life's dualities you know i like I always like to say, like dance on the ledge of life dualities and life becomes a roller coaster of an adventure that is so much more fun, you know? So I seek out pain. I seek out pleasure. I seek out discontentment. I seek out contentment. I embrace my ego and I own my humility, right? Like all of it is real. All of it coexists as one. And that's the path to true transcendence and to awakenings to fulfillment. You know, when you look at, you know, behavior psychology and, and again, you know, talking about Tony Robbins, he did, did you know, uh, treatises on this. You know, we've got these six human needs, you know, and, and um, the six human needs being certainty, variety, love, connection, significance, growth and contribution. But variety is one of them. And so in within that variety is that, you know, we're needing to seek out things that are different. I mean, we are curious beings. And so we need to to go to that dark side. But what's interesting, though, sometimes is that that people for whatever kind of programming that they have. They, they want to stick on the dark side because that gives them some sort of identity and significance. And that is also excluding the light side, right? Absolutely. And so, so ultimately, you know, it is, it, it is you know, like Abraham Maslow says, you know, what we can be, we must be. And so mm -hmm. the only way to really expand ourselves and be that best version of ourselves 
And then with people like yourself, you know, being the light for the rest of us to change the world is then being the best service to the world as well. It's also what you said with Carl Jung. And so I think we owe it. And, and one of my personal perspectives is, and one of my, my top three values, my third top three, uh, third, my third top value is universal connection and contributing back to source. And so in this mm -hmm. universe where we're all connected vibrationally, whatever is, you know, we're, we were needing to contribute back to source. And the only way you're going to do that is by embracing that duality, because it all ultimately, you know, as you said, I mean, equilibrium only happens with this equilibrium and people confuse that concept of, well, my world, my, I'm, I need to be in balance. Well, I don't think that's the right word. I think the word that you brought up is harmony, finding that harmony, you know, the natural ebb and flow in life to understand, you know, all aspects of life and keep on growing that and, and really embrace the fact that, you know, and this is, I think, particularly important in today's world, we really want to embrace the, you know, people's differences. Yeah. It's, I mean, it, it's how you expand your thought, you know, like I learning from something beyond your own constructs of the world is how you evolve to a new construct, right? Like you constantly expand and that's how you learn. Like I'm grateful, like the tribe that I have here, these are people who have taught me so much about life, about the world. And, and they've, and I'm with well, the key thing, even there is you have to be willing to be wrong, which is really hard for people to do. Mm -hmm. Well, again, well, like I said, we'll fight, die, kill for our beliefs. Look at like politics, right? And like, nobody ever wants to admit they're wrong as if it's a you know, shame. Like I always am looking to see where am I wrong? And I have people outside myself too, because no matter how self-aware you are, you're ultimately trapped within the lens of your own reality, right? So no matter how self-aware you are, you can go meta on yourself to understand that it is a lens, but ultimately at some point you're, you're still entering it through your own doorway of the world, right? So that's why I get outside counsel and outside feedback, but you have to be willing to be wrong to, to hear that feedback. And that's really, really hard for people to do. But only when you're willing to be wrong, can you evolve into the next version of yourself? Because if you stay right, if you hold on to your rightness, you will get more of what you've always gotten. And that's not always a bad thing. Like I'm been, I've been blessed with some good success in all areas of my life right now. But if I want to evolve to the next version of myself, to the next a stage, whatever that may be in whatever category, I, something in here is not going to get me there, right? Like Albert Einstein says, you can't solve a problem with the same level of consciousness that created it. So in order to evolve the next self, I have to be willing to find something wrong in the self. And that's not a bad thing. That's not a problem. I mean, I always like to say that progress is not the elimination of problems. Progress is the creation of new problems. So I'm always looking for that new problem to attain that next awakening, to find that next solution. And that means being willing to be wrong. But I could, can't tell you what a difference that's made, even in financial investing. Like, as an example, I used to think cryptocurrencies are all nonsense, right? Till my friend who, I mean, he got into, uh, like, got into it way early. If I had listened to him instead of holding on to my rightness, I would have made a ton more money than I've made now, you know? But by willing to be wrong, that's one example in one category. But in all areas of my life, I'm saying, okay, yeah, maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe I should listen. And then I'll question, then I'll learn, and then I'll practice, and then I'll evolve. And sort of the cycle repeats. Yeah. And, and again, the challenge I think that most of us have, and I still have that, you know, uh, way too often. And as I'm still learning, right, is that when we're wrong, we associate that with our identity. And with identity, exactly. Or, you know, we are not our behaviors exactly. and we need to kind of, you know, disconnect with that concept and really recognize, yeah, I'm wrong here. Well, you know, everything's an experiment. Everything's a test. Exactly. And it's sort of, okay, well, that didn't work. Well, great. You know, no, no worries. I mean, it's not who I am. I'm not defined by this mistake, but when you get stuck in this idea of, well, this is my identity and people are going to judge me. And once again, you know, obviously it, it is, it has to do with an inner child within us and the programming that we learned that made us feel great and made us feel small at the same time. I mean, one of the coolest mm. you know, images that, that, permanently ingrained in my brain i was in spain and i just saw this little you know two-year-old toddler you know looking at the world we were at this you know um, um uh country club and there's this pool and all these people out there and he's looking at, around him and and you could tell that this kid was saying to himself this is my world this is mm -hmm. my greatness this is unlimited possibility mm -hmm. and, and we lose that very very quickly and then we mm -hmm. get into this realm of judgment and and distorted reality, if you will. And so by embracing this duality, by saying, look, it's not wrong, but it's an opportunity to grow or it's an opportunity. It, everything is an opportunity for learning and expanding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely.
everything. Yeah. Every moment of life, every second is an opportunity to train, to get better. Uh, another one of my many mantras, and I use mantras a lot because they become like anchors when life is chaotic. And one of my many mantras is that, um, uh, what, 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 what was I saying? I just lost this one is yeah, if you're not growing, you're dying, you know? So <laughs> that was the one, if you're not growing, you're dying. And so I'm always looking, where's the, where's the growth? Where's the opportunity? So one of the conclusions that I'm taking away from today, one major takeaway from, from me today, um, and, and I'd like to reiterate my learning from you, besides the fact that, you know, I've totally embraced everything that you said, you know, about, um, you know, the, this, this identification, about the duality, um, is, is really that you've done a lot of deep work and you created your own personal interpretation or construct of life that but in the sense of i've developed a system as to how i'm going to approach life and 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 it's your your pre-framing your proactive you know whatever comes your way you know your neuroplasticity has already been developed in such a fashion that all right this is how i'm going to work with this situation and so rather than living it completely at random or rather than leaving being without any kind of control, right? You've got almost a preset approach to a lot of things that you do. And I'm guessing this is particularly important when you've got these intense moments of stress, of pain, of fear, or whatever it is. And the only pathway for success is really to have thought about that in advance. Exactly. Because when you're, when you're playing in chaos, which we inevitably are to some degree or the other, because the mind is a natural state of chaos and the world is, there's so much in the world we don't control. The things, the systems around me, like the mantras, for example, these become anchor points. They become my lighthouses in stormy seas, you know? So that's why I, uh, I, that's why I prepare for the, 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 the storms, you know? And so I have these, these, these things to guide me, and to keep me grounded when the world gets chaotic and why I love playing in nature. Nature is the most profound example of life's dualities, you know, I mean, uh, in, as one example in nature, it's very humbling. You don't control what happens, a brutal storm in Denali, very, it shows you how small you really are, but at the same time, it's very, uh, it's a very egotistical. And I mean that in a beautiful way experience, because it also shows how great you are for us to go into these realms and play in these realms and climb a mountain at the, at, and it's not that we're conquering the mountain, right? Like as Edmund Hillary said, it's not the mountain you conquer, but yourself it's you, you find something so powerful within the human spirit to transcend the, 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 the brutality and hostility of nature. So simultaneously it humbles you and simultaneously it shows you how great you are. And that's why I like doing a lot of these things in nature. It's a beautiful expression of duality. And that's just one example of the duality, but in so many ways, you know, one day it's a storm and one day it's the most tranquil thing you'll ever experience. You get to play and you get to see it all. It becomes a microcosm for the entire human experience. It's all your choice as well. Absolutely. So how do people find you and what's coming up and in, in your, your schedule? Uh, but as far as what's coming up in three weeks, about November 10th, I head to Antarctica for two months where I'll be skiing 30 to 40 days to the South pole and then climbing Mount Vincent, the tallest mountain in Antarctica. Then I'm going up to the Arctic to go ski to the North pole. So I've got a series of exciting expeditions coming up. Um, and you can follow along. I, I share a blog about the journey, share the lessons, share the, the experiences on fearvana.com. You can also find me on Instagram, YouTube, fearvana. And uh, the book is available on Amazon and Kindle paperback audible and all the profits in the book go to charity as well. Wow. Well, you're an example for the rest of us. You're an example for me. Um, oh, thank you. I think I'm going to start climbing again. I used to climb a lot when I was younger oh, cool. and, and uh, put that aside. And yeah, maybe it's time for me to you know, <laughs> dispel all those old programs that says I'm going to get old and I can't do these things. I'm actually on, on track to become that superhuman as well. And so maybe Beautiful. in a couple of years, we'll be walking side by side, some crazy mountain, some crazy <laughs> snowstorm. And, and I arm. actually look forward to that, actually. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. And I'm Dr. Bart Rademacher, and this is Prescription for Your Transformation, Real People, Real Conversations, and Real Success. And it truly is an honor for me today to be talking to actually Nanavati, um, because he really exemplifies of what's possible and, and how we can actually step away from you know, the programming that's taught us that, you know, suffering is not good, judgmental, uh, judging is, is commonplace, 
and um, you know we just need to accept you know one side of the coin. And so once again, actually, thank you so much, and I'll be back. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Dr. Rademacher's Prescription for Your Transformation. Continue the path towards discovering your own authentic genius by tuning in next time for more real conversations with real people.